When I was a school student in Leningrad, our biology teacher once told me in a great secret that she visited a synagogue and she was surprised to see that men sit separate from women there. Why is it? she asked. This is done so men would not be distracted by looking at women during the services, I replied. How can this be? These are religious men who go to synagogue. How can religious people be distracted during prayers and by women of all things? This episode that I remember from my childhood describes the misunderstanding of religion that is popular in the secular culture. Actually, to be more precise, the misunderstanding of human nature that is popular in secular culture. After my last video, Why are there crooks among the Orthodox? I was bombarded with questions, most of which were coming from precisely this misunderstanding. Religion does not transform anyone. If a person is wearing a kippah or payas, this does not mean that his nature suddenly changes. His psyche is no different from the psyche of those who eat pork every day. It is true that religion provides resources and skills for a person to work on himself. But first of all, whether he takes advantage of these tools or not, it's up to him. And also, even if he takes advantage of them, working on oneself is a lifelong endeavor. And everyone has lots of things to work on. One of the differences between the secular worldview and the worldview of Judaism is that in the secular culture, it is often believed that a person can be cured from evil desires and a person can become incapable of certain terrible deeds. It is believed, for example, that art and science makes a person more acculturated, more elevated, and as a result, he is no longer able to commit big crimes. Therefore, in a secular world, one can hear surprises like, I never thought this person is capable of doing this. The Talmud, however, says that the greater the man is, the greater his evil inclination is. With the exception of completely righteous people, of which there are very few throughout the world, and we are not talking about them right now, everyone is capable of everything. When people look at Judaism from the point of view of secular beliefs, their surprises become understandable. They believe that there are methods in the world to eradicate evil from human nature. And they say if religion is worth anything, then religion must be one of these methods. And they are surprised to see that religion does not fulfill this function. The Torah has a more realistic view of a human. The Torah says that if a person wants to do good things and not do bad things, it will cost them constant and ongoing effort every single day. There is no magic bullets. I hope that I can call myself a religious person. Does this mean that 
there are things that I'm not capable of doing. There are things that I'm not used to. There are things that I'm somewhat removed from by virtue of my lifestyle, but not capable of. I'm capable of every sin and every crime. If you judge people by what they're capable of, then I have to confess. I am a despicable crook. I try not to act like one, and I hope that throughout my life I'll have enough strength not to realize this great potential of mine. But I can never, I can never be sure of anything. And if you think that there are things that you are not capable of, then either you are one of these few completely righteous people, or maybe you don't know yourself very well. Very often I hear people when they regret doing something say, I didn't think I was capable of such a thing. Well, we often don't know ourselves very well. The fact that the Torah insists that no one has the right of resting on their laurels. And if someone wants to be a good person, he must make an effort every single day, is probably one of the reasons for the lower crime rate in the Jewish Orthodox community than in the secular world. Because in the secular world, people who consider themselves among those who achieved the status of a good person now don't feel like they need to make an effort to do only good things. And then they're surprised at themselves. The surprise people express when they see religious crooks has the same reason. People think that if anything, and if anyone, the religious people should be the ones who are not capable of doing bad deeds. And then they're surprised. But now we know that this is not more than just a myth about human nature that is unfortunately very common in a secular world.